What's going on guys? This is Brian from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we'll be ranking all of the various different college hockey leagues, uh, divisions, as well as some conferences. So we decided to make a video on this topic here because we've gotten so many people reaching out to us saying, hey, like which college hockey division here is better? Which conference is better? You know, uh, should I go to this one or that one? And you know, after answering all these questions, we just thought it'd be simpler to just make a video on this topic and make everyone's lives that much easier. Our goal with this video is pretty simple. You know, it's just to give you a nice clear ranking similar to how we rank the junior hockey leagues that are best for NCAA programs. Give you that nice clear ranking. That way you're gonna know, you know, where program actually stands in terms of caliber and advancement to pro. And if they ever do reach out to you one day, if ever you get a program that reaches out to you, you know, you know exactly where it stands and you know, okay, is this a program that's realistic for me? You know, that's very good for me or that, you know, I should probably keep on the back burner for now. So the whole point of this video here is just to kind of give you a nice guideline for you to have good ideas moving forward. All right, so a couple of things to know here before we dive right in. First is that the two main metrics that we're gonna be using here are gonna be caliber, which is probably gonna be the biggest one. And then after that is gonna be advancement to pro, similar to how we did in our junior A hockey uh, rankings list in our one of our first videos that we launched. It's gonna be very similar to this. We're gonna use these two metrics as our main determinants here to classify this list. Second thing here, like with any rankings video, it's gonna be extremely general, right? It doesn't mean because we rank let's say NCAA D3 below NCAA D1, that you know, a powerhouse NCAA D3 program couldn't beat you know, a bit of a weaker NCAA D1 program on any given night. You know, that doesn't mean that, it's just that overall the whole league slash division usually is, you know, we see it as stronger and better to advance players to pro than the ones that are gonna be on the bottom. So, but again, keep in mind, it's gonna be extremely general here. All right, but real quick, before we dive into the rankings list here, if you haven't already, absolutely destroy that like button. And if you're new here, feel free to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. So number one on our college hockey ranking list here probably comes as no surprise and it's NCAA D1, right? It just makes absolute sense. You know, of course, this is at the top of our list. Um, you know, and we made a video, you know, kind of explaining in detail here why you know NCAA D1 program is at the top and how its advancement to pro and the NHL and all that, how that works. If you want to click on that video, it's going to be right up here in the top right corner. But overall, I would say yes, NCAA D1 by far the strongest in terms of caliber and the strongest in terms of advancement to pro as well. In terms of conferences, generally Hockey East by most people is regarded as the strongest conference with ECAC being a close second. ECAC is the one with all pretty much the Ivy Leagues and a few other programs in there as well. But that being said though, NCAA D1 is quite scattered. Yes, these two conferences are known as, you know, some of the top contenders, but there's also the Big Ten Conference, you know, and other programs in other conferences too. Like think of University of North Dakota, for example. They're an absolute powerhouse program and they're not in the Hockey East or ECAC Conference, right? But they could definitely, you know, they're a powerhouse program that's typically at the top almost every year and they definitely compete against all the top Hockey East and ECAC programs. So, you know, the, I would say those are the two co top conferences, but you know, there's a bunch of other strong programs throughout NCAA D1. And I would say, you know, most hockey programs, that all, if not all hockey programs at the NCAA D1 level are quite strong and give you a good opportunity to advance to pro afterwards, right? I would say out of all the conferences here, the weakest one's probably the Atlantic Conference. But again, I don't want to discount them by any means. There's some solid hockey players uh, that play over there and that advance a really high level pro um, from the Atlantic Conference. So overall, you know, if you want to play the, the strongest college hockey, and if you want to advance a pro one day, going NCAA D1 is a great option for you. All right, so moving on from NCAA D1 here, the second college hockey you know, league slash division on our list here is U Sports Hockey. And U Sports, honestly, is very, very strong hockey. A lot of ex-major junior players go play there, and a lot of high-end junior A players go play there as well. I would say, you know, in terms of caliber, U Sports is almost neck and neck with NCAA D1. I would say the top, top elite NCAA D1 programs kind of take the cake here. But honestly, like the, the top U Sports programs could compete against the top NCAA D1 programs on any given night. It's very, very strong hockey. But I would say it's almost, it's just like a slight tier, you know, below NCAA D1 overall in the general sense. 
And what makes it kind of, you know, fall second here on the rankings list is the second metric that we're using here, and that's advancement to pro. Although you do see, you know, you sports advanced players to, you know, good pro hockey leagues and stuff like that, um, it's not to the same extent as NCAA D1. You see a lot of big names, you know, coming out of NCAA D1, like uh, Jonathan Taves, you know, Jack Eichel and so on, right? But in, at the U sports level, you know, you don't see the, as big of names as that, you know, uh, play in the NHL. And, and usually they'll play in, you know, a slight lower uh, pro leagues after compared to those who come out of NCAA D1. Obviously that's general, right? There's a lot of factors that go into that. But overall, that's, that's where kind of U sports stands. Good hockey, you know, but overall, um, the advancement to pro isn't quite up to par compared to NCAA D1. That being said, though, I do think this trend is going to change in the future. I talked about this in my college to NHL, you know, video. You can find the link up here if you want to go check it out. But I talked about this in depth and I'm going to talk about it again. I think kind of like how we've seen with NCAA, pro, uh, NCAA where more and more players are advancing to pro as time went on. I think this is gonna happen with U Sports Hockey as well because it's very, very strong hockey. And I think, you know, NHL teams and other pro teams are really gonna hone in on this and it's gonna, you're gonna see this trend moving forward. Obviously, I can't predict the future and that's just my opinion, but I do think that this is gonna happen. And the last quick thing I wanna mention here about U Sports is that it, unlike NCAA D1, you know, the conferences are all, you know, pretty much similar, you know, from what I've seen. Uh, obviously, some conference is probably a bit stronger than others, but it's not as clear cut as at the NCAA D1 level. Uh, I would say if you really want to see, okay, what programs are the strongest, you know, uh, year in, year out, um, my hockey rankings is a good place to go. And also, you can go check out on Elite Prospects, go on the standings page for you sports and check out all the different conferences. See like every year, you know, starting from 2015 to, to now, see each, you know, season, where the teams line up, you know, do teams consistently stay at the top or do some teams consistently stay at the bottom? And that kind of gives you an idea as to which programs are the strongest and which ones are a little bit weaker. So that's a great way to know, you know, uh, kind of see where a program stands overall. All right, so moving on to number three on our list here, and that is NCAA D3 hockey. You know, NCAA D3 hockey, I would say some of the top programs in NCAA D3 are very strong as well. I would say they could probably compete against the lower end uh, U Sports and NCAA D1 programs for sure. You know, think of Oswego State, think of Norwich, you know, think of any of these kind of programs, say Norbert, you know, th these are very, very strong hockey programs and really good players uh, end up going there. Um, overall, I would say the two top conferences to look for are the SUNYAC usually is, is the strongest and NCHA as well is also very strong. It, it competes with the SUNYAC, I would say, um, you know, and then scattered, a car, there's a, lo a lot of teams at the NCAA D3 level. You got about 80 teams or so, maybe a little bit more now, you know, scattered across all the different conferences conferences, you'll see some really high-end programs, right? But I would say the two top conferences, again, are SUNYAC and NCHA. In terms of advancement to pro, honestly, it's pretty good. It really highly ranges depending, you know, on what program you played for, so how strong it is and how well you did in your career, right? But I, let's say, you know, you played in a mid-end program and you, um, you know, you, you had a really good hockey career. I would say at this point, you know, you'd be looking at you know, maybe something like the SPHL or something like that. And we'll make more videos about that in the future where the pro leagues rank. But, you know, overall, I would say that there is an opportunity for advancement to pro if you had a decent career at the NCAA D3 level. Now, we did make a video about NCAA D3 going in much more detail about this. So if you want to go check it out, feel free to click on this link right up here and you can go check out that video out if you want to know uh, all the details that go into NCAA D3 hockey. But overall, I would say, you know, if U Sports or NCAA D1 don't work out for you and you do get a good financial deal at the NCAA D3 level, I would highly recommend to take it. You know, I went down that path. I really enjoyed it. You know, it's, I, I would recommend it for you guys. So number four here on our college hockey ranking list, and this one's probably one that you probably weren't expecting on this list here, but it's the BCIHL or the British Columbia Intercollegiate Hockey League and honestly this one you know kind of surprised me I didn't know that much about it at first until I really got into advising and honestly you know there's some pretty good hockey players that, that go play here but it's mainly because it's in British Columbia it's mainly you know based on BC guys that go to school or um, you know guys out west too that you know go to BC go to some of these schools and play each other a lot of players that, that come here are players that Typically either, you know, have played U sports, but didn't, uh, weren't really panning out at the U sports level. So they dropped down a little bit and come, came and played here. 
Um, you know, also you see players that went to the NCAA D3 level, you know, did quite well, but they want to come back home probably because it was cheaper, probably because it was close to home, you know, and go to one of these schools as well. So, um, but overall, you know, the caliber is very good. I would say it's quite similar to mid-end uh, NCAA D3, you know, from what I've seen. I haven't seen a ton of it, but from what, you know, other you know, people have told me about it and from me doing my research on elite prospects and seeing where these guys played and all that, I would say mid and mid and NCAA D3 would be what you're looking at for this, uh, this league overall. So, but again, if you're out West and you know, it's uh, even if you're not out West, honestly, you could go too, but it, it's not a bad option to look at, you know, especially if NCAA D3 can't really get a good financial deal something to consider for sure if you're Canadian. So uh, overall, from what I've seen and what I've heard, I am a fan of this for, for Canadians if it makes sense for you. All right, so moving on to number five on our college hockey ranking list here, and that is NCAA D2 hockey. Now, we just made a video a few weeks ago going in depth about NCAA D2. If you wanna check out that video, you can click up in the link right here. But overall, NCAA D2, you know, it's very similar um, to low to mid end NCAA D3 hockey, you know, in terms of caliber and in terms of advancement to pro too. You know, I would say if you play NCAA D2 hockey and you want to advance to pro, you really have to have a solid career there to have a shot, you know. But overall, it's pretty good. Honestly, it's uh, very comparable to that. And, but again, if you want to check out, you know, more info on this, if you're not sure what it is, go check out our video. We do talk about it in depth here. So last but not least here on our list, number six is ACHA hockey. And basically for those of you who don't know, ACHA hockey is just an alternative college hockey avenue that you can go to in the US. And in terms of, you know, overall caliber and advancement to pro is definitely the lowest, you know, not saying that some ACHA programs aren't good. We're going to get to that in a sec. Some are very strong. But uh, overall, you know, consider all the other options above if your goal is to, you know, play at the highest caliber possible and advance to pro too. Because if you get ACHA on your college hockey resume, advancing to pro does become quite difficult. So uh, that's just one thing to know here. ACHA actually is nice because it actually makes things very easy for us. There's three divisions amongst ACHA. It's division one, division two, division three. Nice and easy, right? So in terms of caliber, I would say ACHA division one, it, it does vary quite a bit. It is quite strong though. I would say the top high-end ACHA D1 programs are very, very good. I would say they'd compete against, you know, the mid-end NCAA D3 programs. Um, and, you know, coming to mid-end to lower-end ACHA D1, they compete maybe against the lower-end NCAA um, D3 programs. But, you know, again, it, it depends program to program, right? But, you know, the high-end ACHA D1 is very good. And if you do play high-end ACHA D1 hockey and you have a very good career, that means like over a point a game, if you're a forward, if you're a D, just have solid video and, and play great, you know? I would say at that point, advancing to, you know, a lower-end pro league is definitely doable. But, but again, you really have to have a solid career at the ACHA D1 level. Moving on to ACHA D2, again, the higher-end programs are quite strong. You know, and um, I wasn't aware of this at first, but yes, the, the higher end programs are quite good. They compete against, you know, mid end ACHA D1 programs, potentially the lower end NCAA D3 programs, but this is a bit subjective here. You know, it's hard to say, uh, potentially could compete against them. And uh, I would say though, if, if you're at ACHA D2, um, advancement to pro is quite difficult. You're probably gonna have to go uh, get a PTO in the Fed, play semi-pro, or if you're gonna go to Europe, probably get a pay-to-play contract to, to prove yourself, you know? So ACHA D2, although there are some strong programs, it is quite hard to advance to pro from here. So I just wanna be honest with you guys. And then ACHA D3, typically this is players that are coming out of high school or something like that that go straight to ACHA D3. There are a few top programs, but again, you know, it's still, the caliber still isn't um, super competitive, if I can put it that way. Uh, but overall, you know, it's still a decent place to go to if you want to kind of have fun if you're coming out of high school or something like that. But overall, that's what we're looking at with ACHA. If you want more info in depth, we did make a video about ACHA as well that you can click up here um, on the link here and you can go check that out. But yes, overall, that's, um, that's ACHA for you. All right, so real quick here before the end of the video, we're just gonna recap everything and just give you a nice list of our college hockey ranking here. So at the number one spot, we got NCAA D1. Number two, we got U Sports. Number three, we got NCAA D3. Number four, we got the BCIHL. 
Number five, we got NCAA D2. Number six, we got ACHA D1. Number seven, we got ACHA D2. And number eight, we have ACHA D3. All right, guys, that is it for the video. If you had any questions or anything pop up throughout the video that you want to talk to us about, feel free to drop a comment down below. Or if you want to send us a private message, feel free to email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And again, if you're new here and if you got any kind of value out of this video here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. And that's it guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on that next one.